I'm just gonna say it. You cannot sell your way out of a bad business model. Hey everybody, in this episode of the podcast, we're gonna talk about what to do instead because again, you cannot sell yourself out of a bad business model. So here's my question for you. Like how many of you feel like you're sort of stuck in the cycle of either making one-time sales, fulfilling, maybe that customer doesn't stay, maybe they're not showing up, to like, it, it becomes a sort of chaotic, like how do you get them to pay attention into a sustainable growth type business where customers stay, they participate, and they show up over and over and over again for any offer that you put in front of them. Often, we find ourselves in this cycle of more customers and more fulfillment and more customers and more fulfillment and it turns into this sort of time sucking chaotic business. And so before you go out and sell more, let's talk about how we can look at a better way to take the people that you have in your world and create a sustainable, scalable system that allows them to flourish in your world so that when you bring that sale in, you can fulfill on your promise over and over and over again with ease without it taking up more of your time. So let's dive into how do we do that? Like, what does that look like? And that's where the infinite scale method comes into play. So you've heard me talk about infinite scale in the past, but one of the things I really wanna talk about is going from that sort of one-time sale to really thinking about how do you build a business that allows you to grow and scale without it taking up all of your time, without sort of going through that period of, of sort of like, expansion only to implode because you don't have the right system set up to support your customers, or you don't have a specific framework that helps them get from point A to point B. And so when they come in, it's it's a little bit of a chaotic mess, right? You're just constantly trying to do things to get them to engage, to get them to get the results that you've promised instead of creating a really nice, simple, streamlined, path for them to follow so that they become customers and stay customers for life. And and so when I'm helping my customers kind of go through this process of really understanding what's happening in their business, most often people come to me and they're either like super burnt out because they're maxed out with time that they're spending with their customers or they're they're maxed out by like trying to figure out how to get the machine moving so that they can serve the customers that they bring in without all the crazy of all the things like name it i'm sure if you are in this world you know what i'm talking about but it's sort of like you know your business is put together with duct tape and paper clips and you just hope that nobody notices yeah, that kind of business. A lot of times that's what happens, especially when you are growing quickly and you've unlocked the the, sort of the challenge of how do you bring customers in, right? You're able to attract them, you're able to convert them, but then you have to deliver on the promise. And that's where things start to break down. There's a lot of people out there who are giving advice on how to make that happen, right? Just build an 80% solution. Just, you know, put a bunch of stuff together and throw it into membership site, you know, countless different things. Hire a lot of people to help fulfill. And so eventually you get to that place where you either wanna burn it to the ground you want to keep going, but you're exhausted, or you have to stop and look at how to do things a little bit differently so that you can continue to grow and scale. There's never a time where you can just automatically build something and then grow and scale it without really looking at the systems that are in place and making sure that you have the right pieces together. That's when we start looking at that infinite scale method. Now, once you get kind of in the right business model, you're not trading your time for money anymore. You're not doing one-on-one services. You're not doing custom or ad hoc services or creating products because somebody has asked for one. Like you're really taking a strategic approach to how you're growing and scaling your business. Once you're in the right model, which is that scalable model that allows you to build something 
and then be able to deliver it over and over and over again without it taking up your time. You've been able to separate your hours from your dollars. Then you can move to like finding your framework. And to me, that is the most foundational piece of building a business that's scalable and sustainable is finding your framework, finding your authority model and methodology that packages your expertise and what you're like best in the world at, packages that into a step-by-step -step path that provides the solution that your ideal customer has to the problem that they're actively trying to solve. Okay, so I said a lot in there that is really meaningful in terms of like, how do you put this together? So let me just unpack it just a little bit because it will serve you as you're starting to look at like, how do you take all of the things and start to build something that actually will grow and scale with you and with your customers so you can keep them for life without losing your mind, right? So the first thing is identify what your expertise is and what you're brilliant at. A lot of times we we come at helping our customers with whatever it is that they need, right? Like I can help them on anything. And, and that's probably true. You're probably very good at a lot of different things. But what you need to do is determine like, what is it that is your unique ability? What is the thing that you are best in the world at helping your customers with? Usually, if you're not sure, usually it is kind of something that comes super, super easy to you when you're helping your people. So determine that expertise, like pick one place to focus. And again, like the kind of the easiest thing, which is counterproductive for most of us because we think it has to be hard. It doesn't, it just is the thing. And then you are going to identify who the perfect person is for that thing. Who is the person that you can help in the best way that matches your expertise? And so it's really like, what is, what, who is it out there that has the problem that your solution will solve? And then what is it that they want to solve? Like, what is the result that they're going to get? So they have a problem that they're actively trying to solve. And then they're driving towards like, I want to solve the problem. Once I solve the problem, this is the result that I'm going to get because I've solved this problem. And then your expertise fits in the middle. Your expertise is the bridge that someone needs to go from the problem to that solution. And that's all it is. It's the steps that somebody is gonna take on that bridge to go from point A to point B. And the more you can define that, the more specifically you can define that in terms of the steps that they need to take, the easier it is for you and the easier it is for your customer to be able to get to the outcome that they desire in the fastest way possible, which really becomes the foundation for the business that you're creating, is really your ability to fast track the solution from the problem to the result that your ideal person has. That is foundational. Then what, what the beauty of this is, is once you have found your framework, once you've identified that proprietary methodology that's just yours, again, the steps along that path, then you can deliver that in an infinite amount of ways to an infinite amount of people at an infinitely available time. And so that is the beauty of what happens is that like you can start on, you know, kind of the ground floor of you found your framework. Now, how do you want to help somebody actually go through an experience that provides them the solution to where they're trying to go? And that's where like, then you can deliver it a million different ways, depending on how you want to show up, depending upon like the best experience that you can create for your people. But the key is having that foundational framework that's consistent, that's predictable, that allows somebody to know exactly how to get from point A to point B. Imagine if you were going from, I'm in Minneapolis, so from Minneapolis to New York, and you didn't have Google Maps, and you didn't even have a paper map, you were just like, I'm just going to go east, right? And eventually I'm going to hit New York because I'm going east. And, and that's great. Like you could do that. Right. And that's kind of how your customers feel is they're like, well, okay. So I know that there's a, a, a result that I'm looking for. So I'm just going to go East. I'm just going to go watch videos. I'm going to go out and take a bunch of courses. I'm going to go download a bunch of stuff 
and and I'm gonna go east and I'm gonna get to the result. And it's like, that's great, but how how fast are they gonna get, be able to get there, right? How clear is the path gonna be? Or are they gonna wind around, they're gonna end up in dead end. If you're me and using Google Maps, um, I end up on dirt roads all the time, like in the middle of nowhere. I'm not sure what's wrong with my Google, but that's a whole different conversation, right? But I want a map to go from Minneapolis to New York, so I end up going on the right highways. I en don't end up in a dead end. I don't end up lost um, on a dark road in the middle of the night, right? Like I want to plan the fastest way to get from where I'm, I am today to where I'm going. And that's exactly what your framework provides to your customers. And here's what, what starts to happen is they have so much clarity and confidence in your solution because they can see that direct path that they stay forever because they want you to continue to work with them so that they can get to that next level of success that they're looking for. And that's really your goal is to create a business that allows you to grow exponentially and keep the customers that you bring into your world. It is so much more expensive to continuously acquire new customers, burn them out, get them out of your infrastructure and your ecosystem as fast as possible right? And then just keep churning new customers versus getting a customer, taking them on a, a strategic journey from point A to point B and then to C and D and E, right? That Taking them down that journey that allows them to just stay in your world forever. People don't want to expend extra calories trying to figure out what to do. People don't want to always go to different people to find out the answers. They want to go to someone they trust, someone who is organized and has a methodology that can help them and an experience that they love to be a part of, right? So help them stay in your world by creating a couple foundational things. One is that framework. The next thing is map out the customer journey. You should know each and every step and milestone and obstacle and hurdle that your customers are going down as they're a part of your world. And when you create that map, then you're able to know exactly where every single one of your customers is and how to help support them in the best way possible. So instead of like constantly creating new things, constantly showing up, having conversations, hoping that, that your customer is going to get something out of it, you are showing up at the right times that allow them to continue moving forward, which incidentally is much easier than trying to recreate the wheel every single time that you're doing something. So it, it simplifies the entire, your entire organization. And so as you're mapping that out, that is, it's the framework, it's the customer journey. And then there are so many tools and systems that will help support you along that the customer's journey that, you know, probably 80% of what you're doing can be automated once you step out of the hub of doing all of the things. When you let the system that you've built be the hub, it changes the way that people will interact with your framework, with the customer experience, and with you as the coach who's leading them through the challenge they have to the solution they're looking for. And so when you step into that ability to offer a, a, a seamless experience for your customers, they not only will stay for life, but they will continue to participate and show up and eventually become your biggest ambassadors and maybe end up becoming your certified partners as they start to build their business around maybe some of the things that you are offering to them as they get more enmeshed in what you're, what you're giving them as they move forward. I have a client right now who has literally hired one of their like long-term members because they've gotten so much success working with this framework that, that, that my client has put together that they now want to use it to help coach others. 
and they want to use it in their business to help their own customers. And so the sky is the limit once you start to look at creating your business from a fundamental framework instead of just grabbing, you know, random offers here and there based on, you know, different needs that you're seeing out in the marketplace. It's a completely different approach to taking your business, making it into something that's scalable and sustainable so that you're consistently growing with ease without maxing out your calendar. All right, so that is today's episode. Hopefully you got some nuggets out of that and you're thinking, okay, what is my framework? Like one of the things I challenge you on is like, what is one of the first steps that you do with every single customer that you have? right? That's probably step one or somewhere in the beginning of the journey that you're taking someone down. Start to see if you could put some parameters around creating a framework. Do you have steps that you're taking all of your customers down? Are there, you know, specific sort of milestones that they're going to take? Maybe you have different levels, Level one is when people come in and it's the basics and the foundations, and then you move to level two, and then you move to level three. Start to see if you could put some some structure around how you're delivering your services or your program or whatever it is that you're doing, and and start to just put a little bit of structure around it and see what happens. You may have a framework that is already built and it's already something that you're using. You just haven't packaged it into something that can be a tangible uh, solution for people to pick up and grab. All right, there you go. Hopefully this episode serves you. I would love it to get your feedback on this. If you have a framework, you have a methodology, let me know. Reach out in the show notes should be my, my contact information. Reach out. I would love to hear what your methodology is. If it's visual, that's even better. And If you are in a place where you're like, hmm, this is interesting, like this could really change my business today from kind of being that chaotic, hot mess express, right? Put together with duct tape and paper clips, I see you, right? If that's your business today and you're like, hmm, I wonder if a framework could help me. I wonder if there's a different way I could be approaching the work that I do to help me not feel so maxed out, not feel burnt out, and not feel like I'm kind of constantly on a hamster wheel of chaos, reach out to me. Again, I would love to talk to you. You could set up a free call with me. We'll have a little conversation of where you are and would love to help you out. So again, definitely go ahead and use those resources. In the meantime, enjoy the day and I will talk to you on the next episode. (music) 